Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. This is this virus shouldn't exist, but it does. By the channel Kuzgazad in a nutshell. Yeah, it's another Kuzgazad video. This is a new one apparently. So yeah, this is uh, biology is not my strong field, right? Yeah, I am close to no knowledge of biology. So whenever Kuzgazad upload any biological videos about virus and things like this, it's always fun. So hidden in the microverse all around you, there is a merciless war being fought by the true rulers of this planet, microorganisms. Uh, Amoeba, protist, bacteria, archaea, and fungi compete for resources and space. And then there are the strange horrors that are viruses. Oh god. Hunting everyone else, not even being alive. They are the tiniest, most abundant, and deadliest being on earth, killing trillions every day. Not interested in resources, only in living things to take over. Or so we thought. It turns out that there are giant viruses that blur the line between life and death. And other viruses hunting them. Whoa! Giant viruses. It's gonna be fun. Hidden in the microverse all around you, there's a merciless war being fought by the true rulers of this planet, microorganisms. Amoebae, protists, bacteria, archaea, and fungi. All right. You know, I need to stop uh, reading a description from this channel, basically. I do that for all the channels, so I can't remember it usually, but I have to remember now because... This is literally the starting of the video, so I don't have to say it. Compete for resources and space. And then there are the strange horrors that are viruses hunting everyone else. Not even alive, they are the tiniest, most abundant and deadliest beings on Earth, killing trillions every day. Not interested in resources, only in living things How to giant take over. For? Or so we thought. Turns out there are giant viruses that blur the line between life and death, and other viruses hunting them. Enemy of my enemies, my friend? Or maybe not. Considerably smaller than your cells or even bacteria, viruses are nothing but a hull, a tiny bit of genetic material, and a few proteins. No metabolism, no way to propel themselves, no will or ambition. They float around aimlessly and hope to stumble upon a victim to infect and take over. Viruses are so simple that we're not sure if they should count as living things or not. Some scientists argue viruses are alive. Others think that the cells they infect are the actual living viruses, hybrid organisms called virocells. And the vi isn't this semantics though? I mean, it's such a simple uh, life form, so it's not alive, right? But if it infects something, that's now alive, hybrid life forms. Some say the cell, you know, virus itself is alive. Some say virus is not. The, what virus infects is now alive. Viral particles are more like seeds or spores. Yeah. And many others think viruses are just dead material. The origin of viruses is a mystery because how can something that needs victims to make more of itself emerge in the first place? There are many ideas. Viruses may have been essential steps in the emergence of life, or maybe they started out as escaped DNA from cells that became really good at making copies of themselves. Maybe they are the descendants of truly lazy parasites that let others do all the work for them. Okay. The current thinking is that viruses probably emerged multiple times from different origins, but we simply don't know for sure yet. Whatever the truth is, viruses are the most successful beings on this planet. There's an estimated 10,000 billion 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 viruses on Earth. If we put them all next to each other, they would stretch for 100 million light years, 500 Milky Way galaxies wide. Very recently, viruses became even weirder when scientists found a completely new type. Giant viruses, nicknamed gyrus. Is it uh, that wondrous that our immune system is so complex and strong because that many viruses are out there? Not only did it break all sorts of records, but questioned many assumptions we had about their nature. Gyruses even come with their own parasites, virophages. Viruses that hunt other viruses which seemingly makes no sense at all. And what? since we identified the first one in 2003, it seems like these giants are everywhere we look. I guess because of the size differences, they you know, they, 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 they can attack each other because of the size differences. That's why he says that it blurs the line between the viruses and the living thing or whatever. 
<laughs> that's something that virus attacking virus. In the oceans, in water towers, in the guts of pigs, and the mouths of humans. And they're what? even weirder than we thought. Gyruses look funny, like hairy geometric forms or mini pickles, much larger than all viruses we knew before, which explains uh, how they could hide ooh. in plain sight for centuries. Scientists saw them under their microscopes and just thought they had to be bacteria. It's like suddenly discovering there are elephant-sized ducks everywhere. Most gyruses we've found so far hunt amoebae and other single-celled beings. When they find a victim, they connect with it and I use it. Virus. I think I remember, I've heard that, I've watched something on TV or maybe I read it somewhere. Isn't that the uh, most complex virus that is, right? I think that's the one. Natural processes to enter the cell. Like all viruses, their goal is to misappropriate the victim's infrastructure and procreate. Imagine a mouse crawling into your mouth and using your guts and bones and fat tissue to build a mouse factory. The gyrus Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Because <laughs> that doesn't have a PR guy, does it? Because <laughs> that, is, that is no channel in the entire YouTube. Is, that gives me existential crisis as this one, right? There's so many videos like this because it's like, ah, screw it. Uh, yeah, this phrase uh, makes sense. Not that everybody's going like, what the fuck? This unloads its attack proteins and genetic material and rearranges the cell from the inside. Its structural elements, protein production machinery and large amounts of mitochondria for energy are changed to become an actual factory called viroplasm. Some gyruses even construct a membrane to shield them from the cell's antiviral defenses. Once finished, the viroplasm begins to assemble new gyruses, using the victim up from the inside until it's filled up. Finally, the invader usually orders the cell to self-destruct and releases new gyruses to look for new prey. Damn. But what makes gyruses special is not their modus operandi or their size even, it's that they are much more complex than thought possible for a virus. Your cells have around 20... I mean, it makes sense. The more bigger the cell, the more complex it would be, right? Um, but are they really, uh, you know, really deadliest? One of the deadliest viruses are there because they're big and complex? I don't know. Damn, there is a real differences, right? Like he saw, you know, one of the, you know, giant virus and coronavirus side by side. And it's a real difference, like 10 times or something like that. Size difference. Thousand genes. A typical bacterium has a few thousand genes. The coronavirus has around 15, HIV or the flu around 10. The number of genes alone is certainly not everything. The tomato, for example, has 35,000 genes. <laughs> But generally, we think of life as a complex system. So below a certain complexity level, something may be closer to dead material rather than a living organism. But gyruses can have hundreds or even thousands of genes, blurring Whoa. the line between living and dead things. And it's not just the numbers that are special, but also what these genes do. We used to think of viral genes as the simplest of instructions, just enough to overcome the defense of their victims and make new viruses. But many gyrus genes are completely unique. Wait a minute, does that mean that it has more ability to, I guess, uh, you know, in future change itself, right, mutate over and over again? And maybe in long, long term, this might be one of the deadliest thing that is, giant viruses, since it has so many genes. Basically, mystery genes. Even more confusing, a huge selection of their genes that are actually hallmarks of living things. Genes that regulate nutrient intake, energy production, light harvesting, replication, or are just necessary to keep cells alive. Some recent studies have even suggested that some gyruses with very complex genomes may be able to maintain a basic level of metabolism on their own, which if oh. true, will shake up what we thought of viruses even more. Yeah. We still don't know anything for sure, but one idea about gyrus genes is that they might fundamentally alter the physiology and evolution of their victims by integrating their own genomes and merging with them into chimeric organisms. Okay. Or the other way around, take some host genes with them and be changed themselves. Oh yeah, for you millions would of mute years, gyruses may have been existing alongside and infecting cells, exerting an unseen influence on the development of life not just as a parasite, but jerking evolution in different directions by mixing genes around in order. Oh, God. So, 
the fight with the, I guess, viruses will be, I guess, you know, uh, there, will, there will be no end to it, right? There are trillions of viruses, and even then they can mutate a lot, right? Between different species, it would, you know, it would mutate different species, or species would mutate them and change them. That is just after, look at this shit. I mean, when you really think about it, right, in that sense, like, holy shit, how many viruses are there? I also watch, you know, one of the parasite video from this channel. Obviously, uh, you know, the major organization around the world basically uh, eliminated those parasites, but there, there were real parasites that basically comes out of you if you get infected with it. Chances of you, you know, having that is extremely low now. But still, things like that exist in the world. It's really fucking scary. This is why people say, okay, Earth was made for us. Why would we go anywhere else? First of all, Earth was not made for us. If you see all things like that, everything tries to kill you, right? Your immune system is so complex. And even then, sometimes it's not enough. That's just fucked up. Directions. Which brings us to another unique thing about them. Virophages. The viruses hunting gyruses. The concept itself is a bit mind-boggling. How can a thing that might be dead hunt another thing that might be dead too? Let's look at one of them. The virophage is Sputnik is hunting a gyrus called Mammavirus that itself is hunting amoebae. Sputnik is a tiny minimalistic virus that doesn't even have the genes and tools to replicate itself. What it does have is the ability to hijack the viroplasm factories of Mammaviruses. So virophages need their victim, the gyrus, to infect their victim, an amoeba, first, and then they can parasitize it. A mammavirus viroplasm infected by Sputnik can only produce very few new gyruses, and among these, many are deformed and broken, unable to infect further cells. Instead, it makes loads of new Sputnik virophages. Uh. Other virophages are even more subtle. When they infect a viroplasm, they just integrate their genetic code into the newly produced gyruses, like sleeper agents. The next time one <laughs> I love how the Sputniks are sneaky things. Other virus is like, okay, yeah, I'm reproducing myself. I don't think so. Sputnik is the one taking everything. These infiltrated gyruses successfully infects a cell, it produces mostly virophages instead of gyruses. Gyruses are not completely defenseless, though. A few years ago, the world was in awe when scientists discovered CRISPR, a bacteria defense system against viruses. It turns out some gyruses have a system that might be similar, a sort of gyrus immune system against virophages. In turn, virophages can also be used as an anti-gyrus defense mechanism by living cells. Some protists have been found that integrated the genetic code of virophages into their genome and kept it. When the protists were infected by gyruses, they used the code to create virophages themselves to take over the gyrus factories. In the end, uh. the protists would still be killed by the gyrus infection, but instead of releasing gyruses to kill its buddies, it released virophages to hunt them. The amazing thing about everything we've nice. told you in this video is that we're still very much at the beginning. It's not even been 20 years since the discovery of gyruses and... Yeah, I mean, it's it, it kind of makes sense. There's a size difference, so I guess it's like a d different viruses, so they would attack because they are complex and big. Other viruses would attack them. That's kind of understandable, like some something like a food chain in virus world. But that is something, right? Uh, you know, humans can basically use certain virus to hunt certain virus and, yeah. Virophages, there is so much going on in the microverse. Life is not an isolated event, but a ping-pong game of trillions of organisms and viruses. So when you feel down, and like there's not that much new to discover, think of gyruses and all the other elephant-sized ducks all around us. Invisible, until we look more closely. But how do you learn to look at the world like a scientist? The best way is by trying things out for yourself. Our friends from Brilliant are the... There you go. Yeah, but go to brilliant.org for us nutshell and support that channel. Uh, damn, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, you know, small viruses and there's 10 times bigger giant viruses and it just scales up from there, right? Uh, so, you know, small viruses hunts the bigger one because they see them as a different one. So they can, or maybe there is, uh, you know, something needs to be a bigger than the smaller virus for smaller virus to attack it. Some rule like that, who the hell knows? Yeah, biology field, we really need to expand, you know, 
really deep into the biology field, right? And people need to invest, uh, governments need to invest a lot into this research because there is way too much to discover. Even 100 years, uh, 100 years in the future, we would still have lots of things to you know, discover and I guess, you know, cure viruses and all the diseases. But damn, this is just effed up, right? All the trillions and trillions of viruses and then mutation of them is just, this is never ending war, right? Probably plagues are going to come in the future. It's just, and also people, scientists probably predicted that now global warming, now aiding things viruses might be more frequent now so yeah that's the fucked up news all right people that's that was this virus shouldn't exist but it does yeah, it's a strong thing to say it shouldn't exist it's you know i mean anything can exist if it doesn't defy laws of physics so, yeah this is by the channel because in a nutshell if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe check out all the reaction i did there's a link in the description check out the cast over playlist like because that reaction and uploaded quite a few reaction videos from this channel already so check out the playlist it's easier that way Check out the playlist too, like Real Life Lore, uh, History, Oversimplified, Holy Sarcastic Production, and yeah, I'll see you next time.